Okay, let's use the compound interest formula. So with compound interest, what's gonna happen here is, let's kind of define what each one of these letters represents in our formula. So A of T is just gonna be the accumulated amount or the account value. T is gonna be the time measured in years. P is gonna be whatever we start with. Sometimes we refer to this as being the principal when we're talking banking problems or maybe present value um, in some of our applications. R is gonna be an annual percentage rate, an APR. Um, normally this comes as a percentage, but what we wanna do is move two decimal places to the left and make this into a decimal. And then N is the number of compoundings uh, in a single year. So even if uh, an account was open and this left there for 20 years, it's however many compoundings or however many times the interest is calculated and reinvested into the account in a given year. Okay, so let's jump into just a couple examples of this. We wanna invest $3,000 in an investment paying 3% interest compounded quarterly. And we wanna know how much is gonna be in the account in 10 years. So we don't know the future value or the accumulated amount um, or the account value. So no, we don't know what A is at this point. We do know how, how much we invest. We're gonna invest $3,000. So we refer to that as being the principal or the starting amount. Our rate is this 3% interest, but we're gonna go two decimal places over to the left. So 0 0.03 is what we're gonna plug into the formula. Now our number of compoundings, that's based on this being compounded quarterly. Since there are four quarters in a year, that's gonna happen four times in a year, every three months, but that's gonna be four times per year. And then finally, our time frame T, how much is this gonna be worth in 10 years? T is gonna be 10. So we can say A of 10, or sometimes I just leave that as A over on the left-hand side is gonna equal 3000 times the quantity one plus 0 0.03 divided by four raised to the four multiplied by 10 power. Now, hopefully we get comfortable enough with our calculators, we can get this all in at once. The parentheses you're gonna need are the ones that are shown. Um, when I put it in my calculator, I use my exponent button. I have to put parentheses around this exponent because there's an operation going on in there. Um, some of you will not need to, as long as the four and the 10 remain up in the exponent. So usually when we do these problems, we're gonna to round to two decimal places, just like if we had opened the account at the bank. So putting this in my calculator, I have $4,045.05. Rounded to two decimal places there for how much is going to be in the account after the 10 years time frame. All right, let's work one more very similar to this. We have an initial investment of $100,000 that's been invested at 12% interest compounded weekly. So 52 weeks in a year. And we want to know what will the investment be worth in 30 years. So we don't know the accumulated amount or what's the account value. We do know we invested $100,000, so that's gonna go in for our P. Our rate goes with this percentage, but we move two decimal places over to the left. So 0 0.012, 0 0.12. Our number of compoundings, this is compounded weekly, so they tell us 52 weeks per year. And finally, our time frame is gonna be the 30 years. So again, A of 30 is gonna equal 100,000 times one plus 0 0.12 divided by 52, raised to the 52 multiplied by 30, using that start indicate multiplication. And then hopefully we get to the point where we're comfortable getting this all in the calculator all at once. So in putting this in, I got this to be 3 million 600 $44,675.88. Again, rounding to two decimal places, just like the bank would if you had opened an account under these conditions and you're withdrawing it 30 years later. All right, hope this helps out as we're getting used to filling into the compound interest formula. Uh, if it doesn't say continuously, we're gonna use this uh, formula. Hope this helps, good luck.